हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट 16 फ्रीडम एंड लिबर्टी एंड आवर टॉपिक इज फ्री स्टेट्स एंड फ्री सिटीजन्स रूसो सेज दैट इन द स्टेट ऑफ नेचर आवर फ्रीडम डिराइव्स फ्रॉम आवर फ्री विल आवर कैपेसिटी टू रिसिस्ट द डिजायर्स व्हिच प्रेस अस टुगेदर with our status as independent creature neither subject to the demands of others nor dependent on them to get what we want as contra- contractors we shall be satisfied with no, no nothing less than that social state which best approximates to this natural condition natural freedom is lost but the thought of it gives us a moral benchmark by which we can appraise the institutions of contemporary society in society a measure of freedom can be recovered along three dimensions moral freedom democratic freedom and civil freedom the first one is democratic freedom the essence of the case for democracy as a dimension of freedom is simple democracy affords its citizens the opportunity to participate in making the decisions which as laws will govern their conduct for kant autonomous action consists in living in accordance with the laws which one has determined for oneself as possible for each agent to follow democracy represents a rough political analog of this model freedom consists in living in accordance with laws one has created as applicable to all citizens oneself included berlin argued that the democracy is a very different ideal or to liberty major decisions can threaten liberty as js mill argued it is a mistake to review this consideration possibly though it may be as decisive any system other than democracy will deny citizens the opportunity to engage in an activity that may many regard as valuable democratic activity gives us the chance to assert that we are free of claimants of authority democracy may be necessary to freedom but it carries its own distinctive threats now let us move to the next point civil liberty citizens who value liberty and express this through their participation in democratic institutions which liberty requires will in all consistency be reluctant to interfere in the lives of their fellows whether by law or less formal mechanisms their deep concern to establish institutions which empower everyone will make them cautious about the introducing measures which constrain individual choice accepting the necessity of democratic institutions and their associated freedoms valuing strongly the opportunities these offered for citizens to embody their various conceptions of the good life in constitutional and prescriptive laws they will be hesitant to constrain their own pursuit of their these values to the rational man it is a miserable thought 
that others may defy the canons of rationality. Just as we are prepared to approve external constraints on our own decision making, recognizing our vulnerability to temptation, so too must we be prepared to adopt institutions which guard against the worst of human folly. Now let us conclude the unit. Berlin's work on liberty represented a notable ad advance on the prevailing standards of philosophical correctness. He showed that an important ethical concept is susceptible of two and possibly two hundred different analyses. There is no one coherent way of thinking about liberty. There are at least two and these amount each of them to rich traditions, each tr tradition dissolving into desperate components which challenge fellow contenders for the torch of the best way of thinking about the value of liberty. If there are many ways of thinking clearly about liberty as about democracy or justice, the important question concerns which way we are to select as most apt to characterize judgments about the importance of liberty as a political value. The accounts of selection are complex and following are the chief characteristics. Basically agents are free when they are not hindered in their pursuit of what they take to be a worthy living. Hindrances are to be constructed wisely in a political or more widely social context. They will include laws backed by sanctions as well as the corrosive instruments of positive morality. But individuals can also claim to be unfree when governments in particular fail to empower them in sufficient measure to attain levels of accomplishment, which are the necessary preconditions of a life which is authentically their own. Political institutions can foster liberty on this capacious understanding in a range of ways. A sound theory of liberty should recognize the genus phase of the criminal law in particular. It can serve as a protection, demarcating with the force of sanctions the boundaries which freedom requires if the pursuit of the good life is to be safe within them. Governments and citizens individually should be modest in respect of both their ambitions and effectiveness concerning the likelihood of their inferences promoting the good of their helpless and obdurate fellow citizens. Now let us wind up the session and we have come to the end of the unit. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self-learning podcast.